Uh, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, just a quick update on the uh, consolization of this uh, my MBS. Um, as you can see, I've uh, printed off the pinouts for the AES uh, for the that DIN. Uh, it's an eight pin sort of, it's circular or U type or whatever it is. So I've got exactly the same parts um, from Maplin. Um, got the SCAR pin out there, um, and I've also got the um, super gun there to compare to, so I've just been measuring on the meter. Um, I found one of each of these types of resistors for the various uh, pin outputs there. I think there are three, 300, I'm not sure, 380 or 390 ohm resistors, one for R, one for G, one for B colours. Um, there's probably one for the sink. I think there's a 2.2k resistor in there somewhere and a 100 ohm resistor. So, um, So I've got the uh, SCART socket here ready, got my wire ready to go, and these 380, I think they are, you measure about 390, I'm not sure, I can't remember, I can't remember white, whether white's uh, a, a 9 or an 8, um, I should check it up, uh, look it up really, but these are identical to the ones that are on the um, super gun, so they'll be fine, uh, and I'm just going to put each one of these in series, with the, one with the red, one with the green, one with the blue, and connect them to this uh, according to the diagram. Right, I'm just about to solder these on, on there. So I start by just clean the tip up a bit. You can see I've got some heat shrink tubing on there in preparation. That's the best way of doing this, really. Because otherwise, you'd step over to use insulation tape or something, and it's not very clean. So I just tin by applying a bit of solder and heat at the same time. And I've cut the leg off there, but otherwise, just made that really short. That should do, I think. A little bit more solder. That should do. And then what you can do is just wipe the solder off your tip, slide the heat shrink up over the resistor. Not too far, you obviously got you protecting the, the covering there, and then you can just use the neck of the soldering iron there with the heat shrink tubing. That's the way I always do it. You can use hot air or whatever, and then just heat it like that, and it will shrink and grip the cable and the resistor. Just isolating it in a nice, sort of clean way. Okay, well done, I'll do that. Yeah. Same thing for the other three. There you go, you can see there the um, resistor on each of the red, green, blue. So I'm now going to um, trim those down pretty short, right to the end. Uh, about there. To tin those, and, uh, tin those tips, so you can see that. And mount them in the relevant red, green, blue pins here, which are. Green is pin 11, red is pin 15, blue is pin 7. Right, as you can see, I've got those three resistors done and I've bent them slightly and put them inside the uh, plastic housing there just to make sure they fit okay. Um, the next thing I need is the composite sink, which I'm going to use the yellow wire for for this. Um, and it goes to pin 19 on the SCART uh, via 470 ohm resistor, so I'm going to do exactly the same with this fit this resistor on there and uh, heat shrink it and connect it to pin 19. Right, now I've got the, the four, um, you've got your red, green, blue and the sink going into the uh, scar. I've got the, uh, just the other end of the wire off here for the same colours, red, green, blue, yellow and black. I haven't done the ground yet, I need to do the ground on the scar side. Um, using this diagram, I'm going to stick through to the colours, so red, green, blue, uh, same as AES, and where you've got composite video, I'm going to put the composite sink through there, and obviously the ground. So I'm now going to do that, mount this, mount it on here. Don't forget at this stage, uh, before you start soldering the wires onto the end of your uh, DIN, put the uh, you know the sheathing housing, whatever it is, on the back of there, um, otherwise you'll be able to do it later. Don't forget to put um, this piece onto your uh, scar cable as well, otherwise uh, when you solder your connector on, 
you'll have a problem um, well fitting it, you'll have to just basically t disconnect one of the connectors and you know, just put it back on. There you go, connected uh, that totally to the uh, DIN there, use some heat shrink there just to make sure those are relatively isolated. Should be alright, the main ones to, the main one to worry about really is that the pink one which I've used for the plus five, I don't want the plus five snapping off and shorting out to the audio or composite sync or something, you could uh, you know damage your system. Right, as you can see there now I've got a video out, I've not done the audio yet, there's only a couple of more ways to do. Um, and as you can see, I'm not using the SCART there, I'm using this SCART, this um, DIN type cable, it's connected by SCART to the uh, back of the TV there. Um, so this will be mounted um, on this side panel here, I need to cut a hole yet, I need to obviously desolder that, I'll use some heat shrink tubing on both sides of this cable just to make sure there are no um, potential shorts uh, chances in future. Um, obviously my audio is disconnected at the moment, so I've disconnected that off the underneath you know these were previously soldered on the underneath of the uh, main PCB there the audio is routed through those three loose cables there so I need to mount that little PCB inside uh, might need to put some new caps on there actually just to make sure they're flat because the other are stood up there might not be enough room inside the case um, so there's a couple of bits of things I need to do there like I say route those into that cable into that board so the audio cables coming out and uh, put those onto the socket and it's just literally got two pins left and obviously three, wi three wires there one's the left channel, one's the right channel, one's the centre channel um, but once it goes into here obviously it just gets mixed into two channels coming out I've already got a common ground for the audio so the two pins that I've got left um, I think there's two left, there's, you see that pin there's left it's free, available I should say um, I think there's one on that side as well, you can see that yeah, there's one there, so I've got two pins, just enough for left and right audio. Um, I'll just show you some of the wiring for this, because this was an absolute nightmare. I've spent about an hour messing around with this, trying to understand why there's no video. So if you look at this AES diagram here, I have stuck true to the AES pinout, apart from this sort of composite video, I'm putting composite sync through there. So you've got your red, you've got your green, you've got your blue, I'm using composite sync, um, ground's fine. Um, the audio, I'm going to use that for one of the audio channels left, perhaps, and then the other channel, bit number, bit number seven there for the right. So that'll be my stereo audio, that's all fine. Um, and the thing that I wasn't aware of, you need this plus five coming out. And whilst on this diagram here, it goes to a couple of pins, it goes to, oh, I can't even tell where that's going now. Two, four, six, eight. Is it eight? Eight and sixteen. Um, eight, that's actually correct, actually. It does need to go to pin eight, because I found this diagram after I'd been struggling to get it working. Uh, is it 16? Yeah, I think it goes to 16 on there. And I know it's this, pin 16, 5 volt, 100 ohms, and there was a 100 ohm resistor, which I thought I would need, but I hadn't yet done anything with. And that's exactly what you've got to do. You've got to put 5 plus 5 volt through 100 1 ohm resistor into pin 16. And I believe, if you look back at this diagram, pin 16 is the fast switching. Um, I've never come across that before. Um, but without that, you get nothing. That is exactly what it was. I didn't have the plus five in there. I mean, it is a pretty, com you know, a common sense, really. You know, you've got sort of your red, your green, your blue. And then the commons, uh, something else I did earlier on, I forgot to ground the commons, uh, the, 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 the ground for each um, one of those three colours. So, for example, you've got green. You should say that green ground, blue ground. Uh, there's a red ground somewhere. I can't see it for the life of me right now. Oh, there is, red ground. So, yeah, you, you end up having to do something like this where you, you know, you've got your ground on, you sh you, you, it's like a connector, a little connector that just connects the shielding here, sorry, I'm off camera there, um, and you end up having to join, you know, to pin 18, and then 17 to 13, 13 to 9, 9 to 5, 5 to 4, and obviously make sure that, you know, you, you've either grounded it at this point here, or you've grounded it at pin 4, or pin 18, or somewhere, but as long as all those grounds are all joined up, you've got your uh, 100 ohm resistor, green plus 5 to your pin 16 for your fast switching, um, your sync, whilst it shows here 330 ohm, I use 470, which is exactly what's on the super gun. That works fine. And for the three individual colours, it says 330 ohm on this diagram here. Um, and there's also some um, uh, AC coupling caps there. Um, I haven't needed those. I don't know whether you would need them or not. If you have problems with your monitor, you may well need some AC coupling caps there. Um, but yeah, and the resistors, three, instead of 330 ohms, as demonstrated on this diagram. Um, I've used exactly what's on the super gun, which are 480 or 490, I forget which. Right, 
and that's it. You've got video out there, so I just need to just deal with those uh, three audio lines now and put that little PCB inside. And again, you can see it's working with sound now. Um, obviously, I tested this using the um, test mode, putting the tip switch one on. Um, in fact, you don't even need to do that with the uh, Unibios, you can just hold down the C, D, and B when you get the uh, Unibios uh, logo up when it's booting. Um, yeah, and using that, you can use the, the sound test, well, the diagonal, you know, the, system, the test on there, going to the sound bit and test left, right, center, and that's working fine. Luckily, I got it right first time around this time, I didn't have to swap the left and right channels. Um, as you can see, I'm not using the video out there, I'm just using the uh, 8 pin din. Um, I need to move this uh, little package, uh, you know, for the sound inside. I'm going to have to put the caps um, a different way around on it because it just won't fit for the moment. Um, and then later, um, I'll drill the hole for the uh, that din. Um, you can see that's exactly how I did the audio. I used the unused pin 7 there for the right audio and where the normal audio goes through pin 1 um, I've just route the left through there so it's fairly true to the AES cable with the exception that I've got composite sync going out there instead of um, composite video um, one thing to know about this is I had no end of trouble when I reassembled this after doing the sound wire um, it just kept rebooting and I've read a lot about rebooting with these uh, you know the 16120 uh, in one and the 161 in one cars and stuff but um, I've never had that at all I've never had a single reboot since I've uh, started since I started messing around with this console really playing around with it and done all sorts of work on it you know replacing that S round and stuff never had a problem I never rebooted ever um, and then after I did this uh, you know like I say added the audio in here and reassembled it it was rebooting and it was rebooting on its own all the time you know every you started a game and as soon as the game started it rebooted you just couldn't get anywhere in it it didn't matter what the game was and I, I messed around with it I reconnected the um, you know the jammer edge there on the super gun it's still doing the same just kept doing it um, I took the cart in and out put the cart back in same thing um, I took it to bits and you know uh, messed around with it for quite a while uh, wondering what might be wrong um, reassembled it all and it works so it's a very strange um, I did wonder if it was where I'd routed the cables across the board that um, maybe because it wasn't shielded the, the wire that's carrying all the video signals an audio signals right across the top of the board that maybe it was interfering with something but mm, I, don't, I don't know, I doubt it um, I'm speculating that because I've messed around with this setting it to bits and reassembling it a few times that maybe the cartridge slot connector was not very um, level um, the other interesting thing at the same time that I noticed and it could be the super gun is that um, when, I was, when I managed to get it to um, not reboot like you know just loading the game not starting it it was starting to play, uh, player 2 um, as if player 2 had hit select um, and I've checked that check for shorts, I've checked the contacts, there's just nothing. But it was just a bit, a bit weird, really. That um, I, I ran into, I went into the di diagnostics, you know, the debug mode, test, test mode, whatever you call it, and tested the inputs. And select was impressed by player two. Um, and I looked under the board and I looked at all the contacts, I couldn't see anything. But it was only after I, like I said, dismantled it all, reassembled it all, then it's fine, the problem's gone away. It's just absolutely bizarre. Um, I don't know, I'm thinking it's the Supergun board, you know, the jammer here is not a very good connection because I did find that when I lifted a little bit, then the um, player 2 select thing, the problem went away. So, um, yeah, I guess this is another reason to consoleize it and, you know, to put your own connectors and things on there because these jammer connectors are not very good for constant uh, use. As, you know, mine's been unplugged and plugged back in, I don't know, 40 or 50 times and I think that's probably part of the issue. So I'm just going to have a go at um, lowering these capacitors, just... Um, put some new ones on there and sort of bend them to the sides I think I'm also going to flatten those resistors I think rather than having them um, laid out the way they are now sort of stuck up a bit uh, they might be alright I don't know I'm going to change them anyway I'm going to put some 4K7s in the uh, diagram or the original mod requires 6 6K8 I'm going to put some 4K7s in because um, I'm going to see if that increase, uh, increases the volume slightly. I don't know that it, it shouldn't do, really, but I don't know how it could do. So I'm going to give it a go and see what effect that has. Um, just see if I can increase the volume a little bit, um, not too much. Uh, of course, you know, those resistors are actually protecting the input um, to a certain degree, so you can't draw too much current from the chip that outputs that audio, but I think 4K7 should be okay. Um, and then hopefully this little PCB, once that's flattened a little bit, should fit sort of somewhere inside here underneath the cartridge slot without 
too much of a problem. Um, you can see there also that you may need to do this on yours if you try and do the same thing. You may need to relocate the cap. You know, it was originally sat there and it's like stuck up so much it, you couldn't fit it underneath the case. Um, so I, uh, you know, reseated that there with a bit of uh, hot glue and used some heat shrink on the uh, cables there. And the caps were easy, easy enough just to bend slightly. That one's a bit was a bit problematic as well. It just fits there. Um, you might need to replace that, I don't know, because it's still protruding a little bit, but it does fit um, within the case. Um, the other thing to consider, uh, one thing to note actually I've discovered on this is um, there's, um, the video ram has been replaced previously because it's socketed, but it normally wouldn't be socketed. Um, and I also discovered my Z80, um, which I believe is that chip there. Although it's not... Um, you can see it's Mark CPU 2, so I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It doesn't say Z80, it's a Tish it looks like a Toshiba part or something. Um, dash 6, I don't know what that means, it looks like 6 MHz or what, but um, yeah, that, that's the Z80. In a previous video I was like convinced it was merged with one of the other custom chips because I couldn't find the Z80, but that's, that's definitely it. So you do get a separate uh, chip there. Right, a quick update here. Um, I worked out what was causing the reset. It's, um, it was the ATX power connector. Um, I just had the same problem after doing the, that mod to the uh, replace resistors. I replaced those four 6K8 resistors on the soundboard with uh, 4K7s uh, and put caps on sort of a sideways angle so it fits nice and flush. And you can see there it's actually fitted inside now. Um, I just need to just uh, cut a hole in the case now for that din. Um, but shock troopers, um, after I messed around with it, I, it was resetting, I took the cart in and out a few times, it still kept resetting. Um, I reset the jammer edge there, you know, disconnected the super gun, plugged it back in a few times, it was still resetting. Um, and then only after I disconnected the ATX uh, connector, put that back in, it was fine. It was dead stable after that and it's been on now for, I just left it for 10 minutes, just paused there. You can see it's not reset, it's not rebooted, it's fine. So, as you can see, it's a bit, it seems a bit louder to me, um, I've noticed it. Um, Quite, quite a bit to be honest, it's, I would say it's about 20% louder. Um, so if you're going to do that mod from the MM Monkey uh, website, think about sticking uh, 4K7s instead of 6K8s. So it's hard playing this 100. Right, I'm going to see if I can fit that in. I've used one of these um, flat bits um, type drill bits. This is for wood, but uh, as you can see it's um, I've used it on this, and it's just—it looks like just the right width for the um, that socket. So I just might need to just smooth it down a bit. But by the time that's sort of embedded within there, and I've got the little um, mounting points on each side, it should look okay. As you can see, on the final stretch now, I've got the uh, then there. I've also put the two game ports uh, ports on there. Still using the jammer for the um, game controller at the moment but because um, I don't wired in but uh, as soon as I've done that final thing is to mount a power connector um, on the other side and get a 5 amp uh, power supply um, I'm going to check the current that this is using I don't think I need the 12 volt because I'm routing the audio through the line out so if you were to use the built-in mono audio amplifier you would need the 12 volts um, so it should be all right shouldn't even need to do the 12 volt mod um, yeah, overall I'm pretty pleased with it. It needs a bit of a clean up and stuff because it's got fingerprints all over it and it's pretty dirty, but um, yeah, it's working. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you soon.